Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I constantly get made fun of because it's always been my lifelong dream to have a van. When I was growing up, my family had a Nissan uh, Quest slash Mercury Villager, and that thing was super handy. We also had an older but kind of larger and clunky, cumbersome uh, Class C motorhome that we used a lot for camping and road tripping and just general adventuring. Now that I've got two kids of my own, I've started to think about how can I recreate some of these pleasant and fun experiences for them. Well, over the past 12 months, I've been doing a, a lot of research, and a couple of days ago, I took the first steps into making that dream of combining camping and vanning together a reality. So this is my, well, new to me, 2015 Ford Transit. Uh, 350 XLT medium roof 15 passenger van So when I was doing my research I found uh, actually there's a lot of good videos on YouTube discussing the transit because if I understand it correctly It's the most popular full-size uh, van in the US but that being said uh, there weren't a lot discussing this particular configuration, namely a passenger wagon. As you can imagine, the cargo varieties of these are much more popular for businesses and commercial usage. So, as such, my goal for this video is to simply do a high-level overview outlining some of the features and reasons why I chose this van in hopes that it helps anyone else who might be in the process of trying to build a family adventure plan, uh, van. I plan on posting other videos detailing the build or other specific features, so we'll try to keep this particular video fairly high-level. So, if that all sounds good, why don't we go ahead and open her up. So before diving into an overview of the van, I wanted to spend a few minutes just sharing a few tips and tricks that I picked up while I was searching for the van. Now the first thing that I needed to do was just have a way to keep tabs on the current market for these vans. Well, I found that aggregator sites work really well, and I found that CarGurus is actually one of the best for the type of search that I was interested in. So if you remember, I'm interested in trying to get this family conversion transit van where I want to be able to have a lot of seats and carry a lot of people. So uh, we talked about earlier that the majority of these transits, and in fact, a lot of these these vans like the uh, Sprinters or the Promasters, they're mostly cargo configurations. Now, the Ford Transit seemed to be one that has the passenger configuration and car gurus is one of the only sites that I discovered that allow you to specify the model as specifically an interest in the passenger so this way I can now search for just the listings that I'm interested in and not display these hundreds of extraneous ones that are basically just cargo vans now you can obviously change parameters in your search so for example um, I knew that I had a certain budget that I wanted to stay under and I knew that I wanted specific trim and specific uh, configuration so for example I knew I wanted the medium roof the low roof was too low the high roof was too high so I'm a little bit like Goldilocks and I really want just the medium versions so CarGurus was a real good way to allow you to um, search for just the configurations that you're interested in and then what's even uh, more interesting about this is obviously you could then save the search and even subscribe to this so you get notifications. And this is exactly what I did and I got notifications for months and months until literally the stars aligned and one came up that was a really good price in great condition and it was literally on my way into work one day. So you've just got to be patient. So while we're sitting here looking at these listings, maybe let me show you one other trick that I've discovered that was really, really helpful when I was searching. So let's just click on one of these uh, listings. And as you can imagine, um, they don't show you a ton of information here. So one thing that I wanted when I was doing my search and got serious about a vehicle was I wanted to look at the original window sticker that Ford put out for this particular vehicle. Now, one trick here is most of these listings will show the VIN. If you go ahead and make a note of that VIN number, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to this website. Let me go ahead and copy paste the URL in another tab here. So it's um, window sticker dot ford direct dot com slash window sticker dot pdf question mark vin equals and then if you go ahead and punch in the vin number that most of these sites had listed and you can hit enter and cross your fingers and hope this one i imagine is not going to work yes so as you can see right here this one didn't work because what it sounds like to be is that the dealer or an authorized ford dealer has to notify ford and say this vehicle is for sale then 
once they once Ford knows that this VIN number is up for sale, they'll allow you to go ahead and view the window sticker. So for example, let me go ahead and I'll grab another VIN number off another vehicle that I know um, the dealer has gone ahead and done this. So for example, let me go ahead and punch in this other VIN and you can just see the difference. Okay. So here's another vehicle that I found on a dealer's website where they had gone ahead and asked for it. And look at this, Bamo. You can pull up the VIN number of the original the original uh, window sticker for this VIN number. Now, you might be a little bit hosed if your dealer did not go ahead and do this and it wasn't available. But here's the trick. Apparently, um, Ford dealers and Ford vendors have the ability to, to either access a different version of this website or somehow get the window sticker. So when I got serious about a vehicle, I called a authorized, you know, a, a full Ford dealership to do a pre-purchase inspection. And one of the things I asked them to do was get me the original window sticker. I gave them the VIN of the vehicle and they were able to find the original window sticker for me. Uh, so tell you what, why don't we actually take a look at my window sticker, uh, albeit a slightly redacted version of it, so we can talk about the, the vehicle that I ended up with before we actually take a look at uh, walking around the vehicle. All right, so here you go. Here's the window sticker for my vehicle. Again, I've, I've taken off some of the sensitive information, but um, I wanted to just go over it so you can see what came on the vehicle, and then we'll go take a look at the actual um, options in just a second. So let me just zoom in a little bit so we can just talk about this. So as we talked about, it's a 2015 Ford Transit 350, medium roof. The wagon is the designation for basically a passenger setup. It's got XLT. It's got a 3.7 liter, so it doesn't have the 3.5 liter uh, EcoBoost. It's got the standard engine on here. Um, you know, it's white. It's got all this other stuff. Uh, in terms of standard equipment, yeah, none of this is too interesting. This rain-sensing wiper after driving around for a little while is kind of interesting, but that'll be a discussion for another day. Um, nothing else that really makes a ton of, uh, uh, jumps out or is, is worth calling out, but let's look at some of the options. So, uh, for example, this one is actually really cool. The vinyl floor covering. We'll take a look at that in a second. That is actually very nice for, uh, muddy feet and things like that. So that was great. Um, the reverse parking aid is actually kind of interesting. It will beep at you as you're backing up and it senses an object, so that's great. The trailer tow package is awesome. So the trailer tow package, it has a 2-inch hitch on the back as well as having a, um integrated 4-pin and 7-pin and seven pin, um, uh, trailer light package hookup, so that was great. Um, the backup camera is nothing super awesome, but it's nice to be there. Um, running board, sure, that's kind of helpful and here's the here's the kicker right it's the 15 passenger setup and you can see that's almost a thousand dollar option here but that is well worth it we're going to take a look at the seats in a second you'll see they are they are pretty beefy and the privacy glass is nice so it's a little bit harder to see um oh and it's a flex fuel vehicle but i have not tried that yet <laughs> um so again here you can kind of see Here's the total MSRP back in 2015, and this, again, is the, one of the reasons why I will never buy a new vehicle. This vehicle, for just being five years old, I basically got it for almost, you know, less than half price. So that is great. Now, here's the other shocking thing, or maybe not shocking, but fuel economy is not required to be reported for this vehicle. So I'll talk a little bit about the fuel economy that I'm getting in uh, another video, but surprise, suffice it to say, I'm actually very pleased with it. It's much better than my old pickup truck, um, but I guess anything's better than that thing. So again, this is a, a pretty helpful thing to have, especially when you're going in and wanting to negotiate with a dealer or understand what your vehicle is. So again, the best way to do this is have one of the dealerships, give them the VIN number, and they can go ahead and look this up for you if it's not available on the windowsticker.forddirect.com website already. All right, so since this is a van, let's open the sliding door first. So it's got one giant sliding door on the side that actually comes out, and it's nice. It actually locks in place, so this can't slam shut on a kid or anything like that. But... Let's hop on inside. So maybe the first thing we'll notice here is you noticed uh, this is actually one of the interesting ones. You remember on that original window sticker that we just talked about, there was a running board here. Well, here's a passenger side running board, but this I don't believe is the actual one. This is, I believe, is probably a replacement aftermarket. But as you can see, the step up height is reasonable here with the running board. And you get a second step, and then finally you're into the van. So 
here we are. I'll just maybe do a quick overview and then discuss real fast uh, some of the features as we see. I'll talk about some of the uh, driver features as they relate to that window sticker in just a little bit. But as you can see, two seats in the front. And now one of the things that was very important to me, and I imagine probably you as well, is understanding the seating configuration. So there's two seats in the front, and then you have this three bench here. And then in row three, you have one, two, followed by an aisle and then a single. And then row three in the back, you have again, one, two, aisle, single. And then finally in row four, way in the back, if we wander ourselves back here, this is where you've got this four bench seat in the back, okay? Um, and I'll talk a little bit more specifically about the seats later because like you like I talked about uh, This was one of the major reasons why I wanted to get a passenger van was the ability to carry a lot of people You know if you've got a soccer game for the kids or things like that where you need to take a bunch of people or friends in Coming in from out of town. That's something you can do. Maybe while we're back here. I'll show you another feature. That's kind of neat here uh, There's this emergency release you'll notice there's not a lot of trunk space and we can see that better outside but you can actually open the doors from inside by just pulling up on this handle so i'll just pop that open and let me swing this out and notice the doors will actually just swing and kind of lock shut okay all right so let's go back outside maybe when that might be a good place to go next is to look at the rear okay so let's hop out okay so we can open up the second door here with this handle, pop it open, and again, you just push it and it will just go ahead and hold itself uh, kind of in a quasi-lock position. So you notice here, again, you can't really shut it, so this is nice, so if you're in a tight parking lot here and you don't have to worry about swinging the doors open and banging the car uh, next to you, but if you do want a little bit more room, these doors are actually really nice because you can actually unlock this by pushing this to the unlock position and then it will just release and you'll see here and it swings almost 270 degrees until it hits a magnet on the other side so I'll show you back here see the magnets that kind of stick together so again this doesn't uh, come off I mean I think if there's a really a lot of wind it will pop open but that's fine let's do the same for the other side and I'll show you other thing that I think is engineered quite well. So notice here, here's the open passenger sliding door and here's the rear door. And again, when you shut them, there's still clearance. So you're not gonna have any interference between the rear passenger door or the rear cargo doors and the side passenger door. So again, coming back, You'll see here that in a 15 passenger configuration, oh, I probably should have mentioned, sorry, the one thing, if you remember, this was a 350 XLT medium roof, and it's also a long wheelbase, right? It's 148 inch, not the 130 inch. And uh, you need that if you want 15 passengers, but <laughs> you can have 15 passengers, but apparently you can't have any luggage. <laughs> so look at this. There's not a lot of space here in the back. Some of these seats do come out easily. A lot of them have latch anchors as well, for those of you who are parents. And again, I'll make a separate video discussing exactly the seating configurations and how to take out each seat but you can kind of see it open from the the rear this is what it looks like okay all right um oh maybe while we're at the rear again you remember that window sticker talked a little bit about uh some of the other features like um the tow package so here there's actually a oem ford tow package it's a two inch hitch and you can kind of see here some of the uh the ford uh, labeling here and what's nice about this tow package here is look you've actually got a flat four pin bar as well as a circular i think that's a um, seven pin here so you can use either one for towing um, i'm not 100 percent sure if it has a uh, uh, brake controller or not but this is kind of nice some of these little dots while we're staring here at the bumper again if you remember the uh window sticker this one actually has rear uh reverse sensors so that's not just the backup camera and again let me let me pull the door shut and we can take a gander at the backup camera here let's shut the one door and shut the second door and again you don't actually need to to do anything these will automatically lock here so look yep it's locked there you go. So here is the backup camera. On the 2015 model, the backup camera is pretty darn low near the license plate holder. I'm a little concerned about that because I've heard people say that 
you could have issues with that interfering with ladder or ladders blocking the view and we'll go we'll take a look inside and you'll see that the view is a uh, okay at best here i think newer versions put the backup camera a little bit higher up where you have a little bit larger field of view but all right that's fine with me um okay let's come around to the driver's side again we've got here on my here i've got a a running board again which i do not think is uh stock i think that's aftermarket but let's open up the driver's side door here's an interesting feature while we're hanging around near the driver's side the fuel is actually right here <laughs> so uh there's no gas cap and you notice it's yellow so this is actually a flex fuel vehicle so it can take e85 as in addition to just gas i haven't tried that yet but if i do i'll let you know how that turns out so let's hop on in the driver's side and uh, take a look at some of the, the features here that I liked. All right, so here we are in the interior. Let's go ahead and start the car up. Okay. Oh, yeah, we got a little warning that a bunch of stuff is open. That's totally fine here. But I wanted to basically show some of the features uh, that went through my head when I was trying to find a van with acceptable uh, functionality for what we wanted to do. So um, this sound, might sound silly, but one of the things that I really cared about was cruise control, right? If you're going camping and you're going on long road trips, uh, I really don't want to sit there and monitor the speed. I really need crew, like OEM cruise control. So if you're looking through pictures on car gurus or auto trader or whatnot, um, you can tell that from the uh, steering wheels. So I'm not 100% sure, but I believe all the XLT models have this. Don't quote me on this, but if you really want to know, look here on the bottom uh, left side of the steering wheel and you can see here's the cruise control uh, instruments here and uh, I've tested that out seems to work great while we're looking at the steering wheel you'll notice here that there's also um, controls here on the left side of the steering wheel this is to change the onboard display here so you can do things like flip between which trip meter you want to use look at information all that kind of stuff now if your vehicle has Sync 3, which is I think Ford's sort of voice control or a little bit fancier media package, there'll be another set of controls on the right side. So mine doesn't have that. So that's what I have to live with, I guess. Um, the other things that kind of were important to me is uh, the ability to have like an aux in or Bluetooth. So mine doesn't have Bluetooth. So uh, the only way that I'm going to be able to get this paired with a phone is I'm going to need an aftermarket item like an SB360 or something like that, which will allow my phone to connect to it. And then it will connect to the car audio via an auxiliary input. So that's down here. So look here. Here's my 3.5 millimeter TRS jack for um, uh, headphone input. So that is helpful. Notice right next to it, there's uh, from mine, it doesn't have the USB, but there's a kind of a cutout for it. So that's a little sucky, but um, I can easily get by with having 12 volts because I'll just plug a uh, 12 volt to USB converter here. And actually notice this, there's two of them, one on either side. So that's kind of nice. So once you go ahead and put your aux in there, what you can do is turn on the radio and I'll turn the volume down here. And then you can change it from, instead of the radio, you could do things like CD or media. And if you click on that, well, now it's um, uh, playing the CD. But if you push it again, we'll look at the dash. There it goes. It says auxiliary audio active. So now it should be listening to this for audio input. So I can get by and basically make this thing Bluetooth sort of aftermarket uh, if, I, if I wanted to. While we're sitting in here, why don't we take a look at the uh, the backup camera? So if I go ahead and put this into reverse, okay. Here's an interesting thing. Here's the backup camera, and I've gone ahead and I stuck a little pump, like one of those sprayer pumps, behind the vehicle. And now notice that because I've got those sensors in the rear, which were uh, what do they call those, the reverse park aid it actually notices that there's something back there and it's gonna beep at you and highlight where that item is, right? So if I go, let, let me pull forward a little bit and notice that when I pull, put it in, in drive, the backup camera still stays actually on, which is kind of cool, but let me go a little ways away from that item, okay? All right, now let's go ahead, stop, and then I'm gonna put it in reverse. Okay, and now as I come back, no beeping, no beeping, but eventually as I get too close to some object or some obstacle behind me, hopefully it should start, aha, see, it goes yellow, oh, it's going red, it's freaking out, it's freaking out, I'm going to hit something, so let's not hit something, let's put it in park here, 
And there you go. So that's actually a cool feature that I didn't necessarily need, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's there. So again, in the interest of maybe just showing people different things in case they're also per, uh, trying to find things, um, I believe you can actually turn off that feature here. If you don't like the beeping, you can go ahead and do that. Here's what the dash sort of looks like. You got your tack, you got uh, fuel tank, uh, temperature, uh, our uh, speedometer on that side. Um, okay, coming over here, this is kind of cool. So on this side, here are the power windows. So actually you can switch this to adjust the driver side. So let's go over here and maybe I'll try to do both of these at the same time. So if I move this, there you go. Notice, right, the driver window changes. So that's kind of nice that you can do this um, on the fly and you can pick which one. I also really like the fact that there's uh, kind of a normal mirror and then sort of this fisheye view. So I've driven this around a little bit and gotten used to it. And actually, that's really handy. Um, tons of cup holders for some reason. I don't know why there's a cup holder here, bottle holder there, cup holder, cup holder. <laughs> I don't know what they think I'm going to be doing in here, but uh, oh well. Um, Okay, power windows here. So these windows are freaking huge. So if I push this, look how much window there is. <laughs> There's so much window that has to go down. It's kind of funny. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, here, uh, what else was here on the dash here? So this is dimming your instrument cluster. So here you can set lights to different features. So I have that I'm on auto here. So apparently it will sense when it's dusk and turn on the light. So that's kind of kind of helpful. Um, what else? I mean, that's there's nothing fancy. There's your turn indicators. You got um, on this other stick your normal windshield wipers. Uh, there's supposed to be a rain sensor, but I haven't got a chance to check that out, so I can't really say too much about that yet. Um, I think we already talked about the radio and the media and the backup camera. Uh, let's come down here to see what else is on the dash. So you got controls for the uh, front air conditioning here, obviously recirculating air conditioning like you want, 12 volts, all that kind of good stuff. And over here, let me come up to the top console, you actually have AC controls for the rear cabin. So you can set the, temp the, the speed, and then interestingly, you set the temperature. So if you set it to cold, the air will come out of the top vents, which are right there. You can kind of see all the top vents along the headliner of the, of the, of the passenger section. And then if you set it to cold, the, or sorry, the hot, the hot air will come out of the floor. Let me see if there's a, there's a, yeah, here's, here's one behind the seat. You can kind of see right there. Okay. So you don't get to control where they come out from. You just basically pick the temperature and that will dictate where things come out. Um, okay, what about the passenger size? Is there anything kind of to talk about over there? Not really. I mean, glove compartment is pretty big. There's a bunch of uh, cup holders for them, too. Uh, mine has kind of these kind of silly armrests. You have to push them all the way down. They click, and then you start ratcheting them up to the, to the level you want. And then you have to go all the way up if you want to reset it. But whatever. That's fine. Um, yeah. And tell you what, here, oh, here, let me show you something that I think actually was very key that uh, it might be important for you as well if you're looking at an adventure van slash camper van. There is no center console, uh, console between the driver and the passenger side. Now, you might think that's bad, but I think it's a plus because look at this. I can just go ahead, slide my legs, I can just park, and then I can just walk back to the passenger cabin. So I don't even have to leave the van to get into the passenger or the, the camping area eventually. So my plan is to take out those last three sets of seats here, store them somewhere, and turn the rear into kind of a uh, an RV kind of camper setup. Um, you'll notice, again, this is the medium roof vehicle. And it's, I, I can't quite stand, let me, let me see if I can turn the camera around and look at myself. So I'm, I'm about 5'10", and if I stand straight up, I have to... If, if I if I straighten my back, this is what I have to do with my head. I gotta gotta turn it to the side here. I did stand in a van where they cut a hole for the va uh, for the fan, and in that case, I could stand exactly where the fan is. So I think I'm gonna put the fan where I want to be doing like dishes or cooking or things like that. So I have one spot in the van that I could fully stand up. But really, I just need to hunch over like ever so slightly, and it's it's fine. But for the rest of the family, this is plenty high enough. Um, so again, if you've been doing some research, you know that these vans come in three heights, right? You can get the normal low roof, you can get the medium roof, which is this one, and you can also get the high roof, which is ridiculously tall here. Um, 
Again, what's this? Oh, you got a little bit of a overhead shelf storage, which seems totally fine. But let me show you maybe the, the, the number one reason why I wanted to get a passenger van version here. And that is uh, the, the Transit and the Sprinter, I think, are the only two that I noticed that had a kind of a, a, a passenger option here. The Dodge Promaster only, does, it only seems to have cargo versions. And I've seen people take cargo versions and then slap extra seats in the back here. There's a couple things that I'm not thrilled about that, mostly safety, right? The reason I wanted a passenger is because all of these seats, if you notice, are um, factory OEM rails and attachment points, and these seats are ridiculously heavy. I don't have any concern about the structural integrity of these seats. Um, Oh, maybe while we're staring at the floor, I'll show you one other thing. Remember the last option, I think, that on that window stick was the vinyl floor? So you'll notice there's no carpeting here. It's this vinyl, which is really nice uh, for... if I, I plan on having bikes and muddy gear and kids spilling stuff. So having vinyl instead of carpet on the floor is key. But again, getting back to the safety, let's talk about why I really liked the Transit over some of the other options here. And that is, I mean, you can actually kind of see it right, right here on a lot of these pillars, right? Look at this. Airbag here. Airbag. Well, I guess you might have that front airbag on, on cargo versions as well. But for the passenger Transit, right, you got airbag. Um, where was the other one? There's a couple of other labels here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's another airbag here so basically it was built with passengers in mind here so instead of trying to just jury rig some kind of passenger setup that's the last thing i want to put my kids in uh, or other people's kids in so i wanted something that it was designed from the factory by the manufacturer to carry people here and then i'll take out whichever seats i don't need to make it uh passenger or a uh, camper ready so that's sort of some of my thoughts, at least from a high level of why we got this van and why I'm so thrilled about it. Oh, maybe one last thing. I remember, I think we're missing one of the items on the uh, on that window sticker that I wanted to show was, was the privacy glass. So if you notice, these, these windows are quite dark here. Um, they're not the darkest thing in the world. I definitely have seen heavier tinted windows, but just walking around here in the day, it's, I mean, you can definitely still see inside, but it's kind of difficult. So, I thought that's kind of nice for a camper setup. We'll still probably have to put up curtains or something like that. But, for the most part, uh, yeah, I'm thrilled with it so far. I actually just took it on an, uh, an adventure bike ride. My buddy and I did a bike ride um, over in Port Angeles today, and we drove it about 150 miles, and it was totally great. So again, here's my, uh, my base for the adventure van, and I hope that I'll have more videos in the future talking about the build or other specific details like the seats and other issues that might help you if you're also interested in looking at Ford Transits or adventure vans. So with that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If so, please do subscribe because I do plan on having more videos in the future, and it really helps me continue making these if you do hit that subscribe and like. And if you do, hopefully I'll be able to catch you at one of these future videos. So until we talk again, I will go ahead and catch you later. Bye.